Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel, Python for Microscopists. In this video, let's talk about multi-class classification. And in the last tutorial, we looked at multi-label classification. So hopefully you know the distinct, uh, distinction between these two. If not, let's have a quick look at it, okay? Again, binary classification is uh, where we are actually saying either it is one or the other. Is it infected, not infected? Is it cat or a dog? Multi-class classification is where we are, have an image and we are like, okay, which one of these classes does it belong to? This is multi-class. This is where the multi-class comes into the picture. So we have nucleus, mitochondria, a whole bunch of these, and this image is mitochondria, so we classify this as mitochondria. Now, multi-label classification, again, please watch my previous tutorial, is where an image can be classified into any of these labels. Okay, so here we have the same classes, but here you can, uh, uh, you know, we can call this labels. So this image has nuclei, it has mitochondria, lipids, lysosome. So if you are only looking at this, is it nucleus or not? So multi-label is almost like a binary classification. Is it nucleus or not? Yes, it is. Is it mitochondria or not? Yes, it is. Is it ribosomes or not? Well, there are a whole bunch of little ones, so yes, it is. So this is the difference between multi-label, multi-class, and binary. So let's jump in to have a quick look at multi-class classification. Okay, so here is our code, and again, this will be hopefully a quick video because uh, I've already talked about this, and if you watched our video about how to build a model, this is the example I've used there. So the example we're gonna use is our CIFAR, CIFAR, however you call it, 10 dataset. They have two, I think one is 10, the other one I don't know if it is 90 or, uh, but either way, the 10 stands for the 10 classes that we have here, okay? So this is a data set of 60,000 images, each 32 by 32 pixel, and they're divided into 10 classes, and here are the different classes. So the images either belong to airplane or automobile or bird, but these are all single class images, that's it. They do not have multi-labels, okay? So uh, again, uh, I'm importing the relevant libraries here. So let's go ahead and run these lines of code. And uh, luckily this dataset is available as part of uh, the keras.dataset. So you don't have to download this separately. The first time you run this, it takes uh, you know a while to download it. But after that, once it's there on your system, it should be pretty quick to load it. And um, let's go ahead and uh, the, good, the, the good thing about this uh, data set is now you can just uh, separate them into X train, Y train, X test and Y test directly. Okay, so as you can see up here, my uh, training data set has uh, 50,000 images and testing data set has 10,000 images and they're all unsigned integer eight, which means we'll have to scale them for better results, okay? Uh, now, uh, that's exactly what the next step here is. So we are actually uh, normalizing. Well, I called it normalized because I'm importing this normalized from keras.utilities, but you may as well divide your X train by 255 if you just want to train it and not normalize it, okay? So we are normalizing these. So let's go ahead and run these two lines of code over there. And now once that is done, if you look at your X test and X train, the values appear uh, they went from unsigned integer 8 to floating 64, and you can see the values are all between 0 and 1, okay? This is uh, this can be very important for uh, good classifications. Again, uh, please watch my video about uh, how to build the model, uh, and also about uh, normalizing scaling. So, uh, And uh, Y train and Y test, let's actually convert them to categorical. Otherwise, if I just open, for example, Y train, you see uh, these are the numbers between zero through nine, uh, representing the 10 classes we have. But uh, for this type of uh, you know uh, classification, you need them as uh, one hot encoded. Again, I have a video for that. So go ahead and watch what uh, one hot encoding is. If not, I can just provide a quick overview here. So instead of having uh, values as zero, one, two, three here, we have like zero, one, two, three as uh, different rows all the way to nine. And only one pixel, for example, the image number zero, only one pixel should be highlighted, uh, pixel number six, which means this is, I don't know, a bird. And that's it. It cannot be a bird and, uh, 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 and uh, an airplane at the same time, okay? So that's what this one hard encoding basically means. You have like either this or that. Uh, I mean, not even either this or that. You have only one label. That's what that 
two categorical does. Once you do that, of course, uh, now let's go ahead and rely on data generator. So uh, I'm going to, uh, which means we are augmenting the data as we read it in. Uh, uh, as we read it in, uh, in fact, uh, I think, yeah, let's fit generator. I mean, uh, in this case, uh, what we are trying to do is, okay, we are providing the X train and Y train, and we are kind of uh, uh, augmenting the data set or randomly generating these uh, data sets by performing some shift and change in the zoom. And that goes into our model. We'll get to that in a second. Again, if you watched my uh, videos in a methodical way, you know what I'm talking about. If not, go ahead and watch uh, the previous ones. So uh, how do we define the model? Again, uh, we have a good starting point. Again, uh, uh, if you watched my video about how to do create a model, we took VGG as an inspiration and then defined a few convolutional layers. So uh, you can do pretty much the same. But if I don't have anything and I start uh, looking at uh, these as bunch of images, anytime you have images, at least two or three convolutional layers. Okay, so that's where my convolution one, two, three convolution layers uh, uh, are coming in. Okay, uh, let's uh, do one thing. Let's separate these. Okay, so one, two, three, four convolutional layers. And I'm using uh, the activation as sigmoid. I kind of uh, put my activation up here because I was experimenting with various activations and sigmoid seems to be fine. Everything else should uh, pretty much makes sense. Now I've already added, also added a batch normalization right here. And again, batch normalization has a very good effect on uh, on uh, your results and also on the training speed. We have proven this in the pre uh, one of our previous videos anyhow. So, uh, so this is the structure. And again, before going into the dense layers, I only have two of these dense layers. And of course the final dense output layer should have the n number of outputs equal to the n number of classes. So we have 10 classes or so 10 outputs, right? And our activation must be softmax. For multi-class problems, always, always softmax is recommended. Of course, you can try a few others, but softmax is where uh, it is, uh, uh, it's it's uh, very good for mutually exclusive type of classification, which is our multi-class, right? Only one thing can belong to one, that's it, okay? Uh, and uh, the image cannot belong to multi-classes. That's why softmax. Otherwise, you would be using uh, sigmoid, for example. Okay, so the optimizer I'm gonna use is RMS-PROS and uh, categorical cross entropy is almost the default for multi-class problems. For binary, it's binary cross entropy and also for multi-label, it can be binary cross entropy because multi-label is similar to binary uh, in a way, okay? and uh, we are tracking the accuracy metrics. Since I'm gonna share this code, I included this next uh, few lines that I commented out that you can try as a different model to try. In this case, I this is the VGG one uh, where we took the top three blocks and then added a couple of dense layers, okay? It's, it's up to you what you want to use, but anyway, for now, let's use this one. I just wanna show you how the structure looks like, okay? Uh, again, uh, when it comes to binary classification, regressions, and all of these, it completely comes down to, okay, what activation are you using and how many uh, outputs for your dense layers and what optimizer and what loss. If you pay attention to this, everything else completely depends on whether you're working with images or with you know, plain data, in which case you can only work with dense layers and not with uh, convolutional layers. Again, images means automatically think convolution because why uh, if you collapse it into one dimension and only use dense layers, you lose that, that positional information, right? So for that, you need convolution. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now we are going to model.fit generator because I'm going to use fit generator. I just need to use, uh, uh, refer it to my training, uh, train generator and steps per e epoch. Let's see if my system can handle 1000 again. Uh, probably doesn't. Let's uh, not get stuck here. Let me change it to 500 here. And what this basically means is uh, steps, when you do train generator, you define steps per epoch. And uh, in each epoch, it actually does 500 times whatever the batch size is. I think the batch size we used is 32. So 32 times 500 that many images per epoch. That's pretty much it. That's why sometimes uh, using raw uh, data can be very useful. Like uh, 
importing the raw data, but my system cannot handle 50,000 at uh, whatever batch size. It takes takes a long time, let me put it that way. Okay, so for validation data, let's go ahead and use our 10,000 uh, images. In fact, I'm tempted to change this to 1,000 and let's see what happens. And finally, let's go ahead and plot uh, uh, the loss, the training loss, validation loss, and accuracies. Okay, this is pretty much it. Let's run this and see how our output looks like. Again, completely uh, defined by the activation, the dens, which loss function you're using, and what type of optimizer. Okay, so whether you're doing regression or binary classification or multi classification, keep an eye on these. Everything else you can engineer it accordingly. So let's go ahead and run this and uh, I'll uh, pause the video and I'll continue it. Uh, uh, and I'm working it only for, uh, uh, we're doing only 10 epochs. So hopefully this won't be that long from my side, but let me go ahead and pause the video. And okay, there you go. So here is how the output looks like. And uh, we got about 53% of validation. Uh, uh, right there so uh, so this is how you model your multi-class and you can go ahead and now take this model to test it out on a few images I'll leave that up to you but this is this is what multi-class uh, classification is now in the next tutorial let's have a quick look at binary class classification and I'm going to use malarial data set for that and uh, after that I'll uh, spend a little bit of time on uh, understanding a couple of metrics but uh, I hope you found this tutorial to be useful. Again, as usual, I request you to please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. It keeps me encouraged to create more such content. Thank you very much.